In the workshop, some Christmas shopping and the Stuart 504 boiler first steam test. So on with the Christmas shopping. I went up to Blackgate's engineering because I didn't like the mechanical lubricator that I bought for the 5A. I didn't think it looked man enough for the job. It worked okay, but I fancied something with a little bit more substance. So anyway, I bought this one. In my opinion, this looks much better stuck on the front of a 5A steam engine. A 5A steam engine is quite a large steam engine, and the other lubricator just looked a little bit too small. This one's miles better. The way this is connected up with the rod from the eccentric is fine, except that the rod that connects the eccentric to the lubricator needs moving down into the next hole on the lubricator's arm, because at the moment the ratchet wheel is going around far too fast for every revolution, and this is causing the main cylinder to be over-oiled, and the oil is currently dripping out of the exhaust port down onto the bench. So to stop this from happening, a bit of adjustment is required. I'm not going to show it in this video, because that's not what this episode is about. It's supposed to be about the first steam test of the Stuart 504 boiler. I just thought that I would sneak in some Christmas presents from me to me. Because generally, every year I get Christmas presents that I don't really need. So I find it better, just before Christmas, to go out and buy some Christmas presents that I like. And I like this. I just like watching the wheel go around. Very strange as it may be, but that is the way it is. This Stuart 5A is running in quite nicely now. I've slowed down the speed of the video and the sound to half, so have a listen to this. This is running at half speed, and now quarter speed. It's still got a little way to go before it gets smoother. The clunk that you can hear is just some side play on the crankshaft and it's the flywheel knocking against the front bearing. That's it for the engine. Now for some other bits and pieces that I bought. This was an essential thing that I needed to buy. It's a drive belt for my Sealy belt sander, the four inch belt sander, which seems to go through these far too frequently. I really am not happy with this machine. When the original belt broke, I contacted Sealy. They said, oh sorry, we're out of stock of these belts. I contacted the seller, who sold me the thing, and they sort of ran me round in a circle asking me for more details, even though I'd supplied all of the details. So in the end, I sorted the problem myself. I counted the teeth on the broken belt, and this is the model number. It is a 150XL-037-75. And they're about three pounds. I got these from eBay and I bought about five of them. When I bought the lubricator from Blackgate's Engineering, I also bought these. 50 2BA steel washers. And this really useful tool. I should have bought one of these years and years ago. And what is it, may you ask? Well, it's actually a tool for tapping out cross pins. Pins that go through parts into shafts. And if you want to remove the pin, you simply tap it out with this pin punch. When I made the condenser for the Stuart Models beam engine plant, I did not have the correct rivet snap. By chance though, I did find one that almost fitted and did the job with that, but it wasn't perfect. So now I have a full complement of very small rivet snaps, and I've got the rest of the sizes that I've had for years. So currently the biggest rivet snap that I own is a quarter of an inch one, and the smallest one I own is a sixteenth. So I can go all the way down, riveting away to my heart's content in many different sizes. This morning the postman knocked on the workshop door and delivered this. This is from Forest Classics and it's a Bix gas burner. It's a ceramic type burner and it's ideal for firing a 504 boiler. At first I was going to experiment and make a special custom made long burner. 
but looking at this I think it will be perfectly fine. I've mentioned this before, but it is very important to set up Bix burners correctly. If you get them wrong, the flame can fire back to the internal part of the burner and cremate the ceramic. So take a few minutes to read the instructions and get it right first time. And what I'm doing at the moment is fairly self-explanatory. I've removed the safety valve, replaced it with my threaded funnel and now I'm filling the boiler. And it really doesn't take long before the water starts to climb up the gauge glass. Then I remove the threaded funnel and replace the safety valve. The usual word of caution, when tightening things like safety valves, don't go mad. You don't need to talk it up really heavy duty because if it shears off you've got a big problem. And if you strip the thread in the bush, that's even worse. So just be a bit gentle if you can when you fit the parts back to your boiler. Making these Bix burners work fine is just a case of having the right size jet in the right position in the Venturi before you nip up the screw that holds the jet in place. Generally speaking, for steam in my engines that are not in model boats and such like, I use butane. I do not use the propane butane tanks. Most of the time I use this camping gas canister and they seem to work fine. And because of the physical size of the canister, not much chilling either, so the gas pressure remains fairly constant. And in no time at all, the boiler has some pressure in it, and in no time at all, the drain cock is dribbling. I can't believe these drain cocks. This is a brand new one from Stuart Models. I will phone Stuart Models tomorrow and say, look, I have a dribbling drain cock. What can I do about it? I'm sure they'll send me another one, but that's not the point. I was hoping to have a drain cock that was watertight, but no, the brand new drain cock, and it's had no abuse. I fitted it finger pressure only, but it dribbles. So, you know, what's the point? When is a drain cock not a drain cock when it's a dribbling drain cock? Anyway, I've fitted a blanking plug, so that's not going to dribble, and I can continue with the steam test. Now, I really do have a problem with this first steam test. This, by the way, is just the first steam test to make sure that everything is not dribbling. So far, not so good. The main reason for this steam test is to test that the burner works and to heat up the paintwork, just to make sure that it starts to bake onto the metal. And it is vital not to touch any of the paintwork at this stage. It will need three or four firings before the paint stabilizes. If I touch this hot paintwork, I'll leave a nice fingerprint in it because the paintwork sort of melts together. It actually starts to look better after a while, but be warned, do not touch the paintwork. And this includes not touching it with a cloth either. Leave the paintwork alone. After a few steamings, you'll be able to polish the paintwork up, but for the moment, if you touch it, you will make a mess of it. While I've been talking about not touching the paintwork, you will notice that the pressure is creeping up on the pressure gauge. It's now at 25 pounds per square inch. And really, this boiler's not been in steam very long at all. This is running in real time. I do find these boilers to be very, very efficient. These external water tubes underneath the main barrel give a really good surface area for heating the water. And the only disadvantage of them is that the boiler itself needs to be tall, which in some applications looks pretty good, but in a model steamboat this would be no good, as the centre of gravity would be a little bit too high. So in model marine applications you would generally use centre-flue cross-water tube boilers, and these are okay but they're not quite as efficient as having the tube arrangement like you see in this boiler. I'm currently doing some work on a really old, metal hull vintage steamboat and the boiler in this steamboat is most unusual because the center flue doesn't just have cross water tubes which is the normal way of doing it the water tubes in the center flue of the boiler in the old model boat run longitudinally from front to back pretty much like on this boiler but there are plenty of them all the way around As you can clearly see and hear now, there's plenty of steam available from the boiler. The pressure gauge is showing 50 pounds per square inch, the safety valve is blowing off and making the usual Stuart Models horrible safety valve noise, but on this I really cannot change it to anything else but this. It's traditional, 
that a Stuart 504 boiler has a safety valve like this, so I'm going to live with it. I might tweak it somewhat to take the working pressure up to £60 per square inch, but that's all. Unlike the spirit burner that was originally fitted to this boiler, I can now control the heat source just by turning down the gas burner, which currently is on full. I could have supposed pumping some cold water, that would drop the pressure, but as of yet there isn't a water pump fitted to this boiler. I'm tempted to fit a live steam injector to this one, just to show how they work. More about that later. I'm going to fit the large condenser with the water preheater coil in it, so that will make feeding the boiler a little bit more efficient, as the water will be already warm when it goes into the boiler. So I'm going to use this as a little bit of a test bed. I do like 504 boilers, and once it's finished it will take pride of place in my collection, I think. So there'll be a short series coming very shortly entitled Building a Stuart 504 Boiler Plant. And all being well, it will be complete with a remotely fitted steam turret containing a whistle and an injector steam valve, and of course a water preheater or economizer system, so it should make it quite an efficient boiler. I should be able to happily pump in lots of water without flattening the pressure too much. For the moment, I'm just sitting the boiler here and I'm not touching the paint. You will notice there are no finger marks on the paint. See how shiny it's looking. That's the heat that's doing that. But what it's also doing is baking the paint onto the metal. It's quite cold in the workshop today. Well, it was until I lit this boiler. Now it's warming up a bit because all the doors are open. The smell in the workshop is horrendous. And I knew this was going to happen. A viewer did, of course, point it out to me first, but I've made plenty of these, and when you use cyanoacrylate adhesive for holding the insulation in place, it really smells bad on the first couple of steamings. But once it sets, it's not an issue. And whatever adhesive you use, it's always going to smell bad. One or two viewers missed the point entirely. I'm not using the cyanoacrylate adhesive, and by the way, that is cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue or super glue, to permanently fix the thermal insulation to the side panels. Just like on the original design when the boiler used asbestos panels, the panels are trapped between the side walls and the front and rear castings. The good news is my carbon monoxide detector has not gone off. The bad news is the smell in here is getting worse, so I'm now going to turn off the gas, disconnect it entirely, let the boiler cool down, and hopefully when I come into the workshop tomorrow, this horrible smell of cyanoacrylate adhesive that makes my eyes water will have gone. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>